Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Order of Battle World War II Blitzkrieg, the DLC pack for the game Order of Battle World War II, which allows you to play as the Germans during the early war years in which you're attempting to recreate the German conquest from 1939 to 1941. We are currently in the battle for Yugoslavia. This is part three of our attack on Yugoslavia, and thus far things have gone reasonably well. We've taken the southernmost objective, we're driving north and are just about to take the second objective in Nis, and we've received some reinforcements in and around Belgrade, which has allowed us to begin the drive on the capital of Yugoslavia. We likely, I think, will still need to raise the troops that are fighting in Nis north to be able to take Belgrade. I'm not sure we have the strength to reduce that fortress city uh, in time to win the battle. I'm really focused in on trying to win the battle in less than 25 turns. Uh, because that's one of your secondary objectives. So this feels like one of those rare times where I could accomplish every one of the major objectives and every one of the secondary objectives. For those of you unfamiliar with the Order of the Battle series, secondary objectives generally have an impact on following battles. So if you win the primary objective, then you can follow kind of a historical course of battles and fights as the, as the campaign moves on. But if you get those secondary objectives, I believe, like in the case of France or whatnot, it could allow you to fight the invasion of England, uh, which didn't obviously historically happen. I did not get those secondary objectives, but I think that's what could happen. In this case, in this battle, we won a primary objective in Poland, uh, a secondary objective, that is, and we were able to get an armored train to assist us in the assault on Yugoslavia. So I imagine uh, secondary objectives typically have a sort of perk on the following uh, pieces of the campaign. So the more of them you can accomplish, the easier your job becomes down the road or the better sort of interesting opportunity you can get down the road. So that's why I'm really focused in on this fight because it feels like one of the rare times where you can accomplish not only all of the primaries but all of the secondaries as well. With that being said, this was taken from a recording from a couple of uh, days ago. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn the recording over to myself, uh, which I was sort of commenting while I was playing, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll turn back over to that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Leave your thoughts below as always, and I'll catch you guys at the end. Too careful in, in and around Nish. Let's see what the enemy all has in Belgrade. I know they've got quite a few forces here. You can see they've got artillery, they've got infantry, cavalry. We've advanced slowly thus far, and it's allowed us to kind of pick enemy units off piecemeal. Put that armor in to counter our own armor. It actually did quite a bit of damage there. Again, the French tanks are not fun to deal with. Oh, strong counterattack, but I don't think they've got enough troops to really make much of a difference in the Nish area. Attacking our engineer bridge. It actually gives me two turns to inflict casualties. Pulling those infantry back, they were damaged, so they're pulling them back south of Belgium. Took about even casualties with those units here attacking east of Belgrade. That's okay. No. Gambled a bit there to see how much I could... Gonna attack. Let's reinforce them to full strength. All right, now the attack in the south. A bit more tricky. Get this armor. We will soften up there. Back there. No money left for. So let's put this guy back. All right. We'll see if they attack our armor there. A little bit vulnerable. 
already lost substantial casualties. This train. Maybe bring it in range of uh, supporting on Belgrade. I, again, I'm kind of wasting some of my units attacking things that don't matter as much. The BF-109's there, strafed an enemy to death. You don't normally get that to happen. That was my advantage. And the engineers are not going to move because I don't want them to die. Ankles ready to take off and get back in the fight. Ah. And... That's it. Alright, moving on from turn 20. So, Nis will fall in the next five turns. I don't think Belgrade will. Are they going to lose casualties there, attacking our engineers? They did inflict some. Nope. My only hope, really, is that the troops to the east of Belgrade are able to kind of sneak in and take the actual city itself without, um, and, and then sort of hold out for one turn. I think that's the only way I get that major victory accomplished and win, win within 25 turns. This guy's over here. Well, we are moving in this way. I mean, we are closing in. Actually, that was a very successful attack here as we we're now a hex away on this flank. Good. Now driven to within a hex in the east of Belgrade. Engineers can drive here and begin the attack. And we are closing in. Things may actually be closer than I originally assumed. We will bombard that guy. I feel like our Stukas better use doing something else, but might as well make it easier to take this town. Maybe if one of nine's there to take it as well. Deuce it. And the city falls. Nis has fallen. I don't really have any money left to reinforce anybody. These troops down here are just whittling their thumbs. I mean, they're attacking. They're, they're doing damage, but probably not... Really, it's hoping. Or all right, so uh, I'm gonna keep moving that rail unit sort of slowly, surely north, and we'll see what we can race up here in time. You can see actually there's a strong force here between our train and Belgrade on the southern approaches, presumably to stop our troops after they've taken uh, Nis. I didn't realize the enemy armor was this close. I actually already used up my air units, but hopefully they can finish that armored unit off. We won't attack there, and that's our only remaining unit here. Turn 21 coming to a close. This will be kind of tooth and nail whether we get Belgrade in time for a major victory or not. I presume no. See if they retake the airfield and destroy our uh, engineer unit there. I think they've got a good chance. They just miss out on it. Could bring the armor down here, but decide not to go that route. Um, enemy artillery, or actually infantry in Belgrade there. The problem with Belgrade here is we're only going to have be able to attack it kind of on one front, and our troops are kind of exhausting themselves, just breaking through the outer limits. Uh, we're not going to have a ton of money to spend on bringing the troops that are attacking up to full strength. We're not, again, we're probably only going to have a one 
82x front to challenge it with. So we'll see. They are shifting some troops south. I'm not quite sure. Got it. What I've got to try and do is keep this front as broad as possible. Belgrade. Don't really want to. I mean, see, I just destroyed this unit. I don't really want to advance here, though, because if I do, it'll be a pretty vulnerable unit out. Reinforce this Stug. Interestingly enough, the enemy pulled their unit on the bridge back. Start bombarding them. The river, I think, is going to be too deep to do anything. Apparently, we don't get any more victory points now that we've closed in. Uh, use this reinforcements. Odd. I don't know why. Try and cut these guys in this airfield off. Get them back. Let the armored train rest for a turn. We just don't have good tank country to move any of our units rapidly. Bombard these guys? Not quite. They're not quite in the ring. Got artillery. This artillery is just out of range. Destroyed them. I don't really want to race these guys for too rapidly. Did I not even use my stukas yet? Didn't. Alright, let's finish off that armor. Can start flying them north maybe to support the assault on Belgrade. There are some enemy anti aircraft guns, which kind of get in the way. Additionally, my Air probably needs a bit of a breather. They probably need to refuel. See all the weak Belgrade troops have been pulled back south of the town. most of my units here. Rain could move, but I'm actually going to let it rest. This infantry could attack, but I feel that it would be unwise. Just those two, those three units left. We'll kind of this turn pass. We'll see what comes of it. We've got a couple of turns to take this one hex. We're really close. We've got troops that are bordering it. Probably have maybe two units that can actually attack it. But I think it's a very heavily entrenched force. They've got bunker, very strong bunkers bordering it. You can see there, they just uh, nearly obliterated that infantry unit of ours in a single attack, and we did no damage. We also don't have much artillery to aid in the assault. They've got a whole bunch of anti aircraft guns. Holy crap, that's three anti aircraft guns which just attacked our scout plane. And they just moved a full. Infantry unit in here, which also attacked our engineers. Our engineers did no damage, and they were driven off. So, uh, damn. I don't know if they've got any... Yeah, they got a limited amount of reinforcements that looks like they can give some of their troops down there. We do... We have no money, no requisition points. The attack air apparently just showed up. I don't know if they got more reinforcements or if these units just were kind of not doing anything. We did get some credits this last turn. We can try and get there. Try and use my Stukas here to reduce...
gonna meet Bunker this way. All right. Armor will move in behind that bunker. I mean, we'll get these guys there in time, I think. To win, but not in time necessarily to win in the way I would. Yeah. Alright, so that bunker only lasted one turn against our combined attacks. A lot of money, which I need to use to kind of reinforce some of these troops, which really frank. They're all largely disorganized. Disruption. The Luftwaffe delivered a knockout blow to the Yugoslavian command center in Belgrade. Virtually all means of communication with their forces and field have been destroyed. Nice. All right, so we destroyed their command post. And we now have a two X front with which to advance. That will probably die, but destroy that cavalry unit, which is valuable to us, that, that action. Now we can really start trying to expand front. Well, great. Not going to attack there quite yet. Got a couple more turns here. These guys. Get everybody up. Get them all moving. Get them up. Get them moving. All right. That unit. This air unit's going to have to pull out here. There is still a little bit of resistance between us and Belgrade if we're advancing in the south. Overall, I think to take it in the next turn, I think will be doable. I'm worried I may have just caused one of my fighters to crash due to lack of fuel. But I already moved it, so I can't move him again. We'll see. They're all within like one hex of an airfield, though. Not sure. I think that warning generally only comes up, though, if you have no need to get them to an airfield if you end the turn. Could be wrong. So, counterattacking the south with a strong unit that will destroy that engineer unit. It's okay. At least distracted the enemy. Some infantry down there. We'll see if they plug the gap or if we can move in units here from the what to attack Belgrade from the west. The challenge is also you're attacking either off a bridge or through a river, which does give you a penalty. Oh, everything except the 25 turns so far. Hard him. So we will border Belgrade on turn 25. Potentially from three direct. And reduce the infantry. We'll attack them with our heavy infantry. We've already driven these guys south. Up. Gonna be close. Do it in timer. Weakening their artillery here hopefully weakens the defense. Usually when you've got like adjacent artillery it does give perks to the defenders. Ankle up a bit.
armor removed. Uh, running into enemy units. The F-109 will go land. Alright, so let's see here. I'll go ahead and start moving some of our artillery up. Get them moving forward. Now that Nis has fallen, we need to really try and, as quickly as we can, drive north on Belgrade. We only have two turns left, the 24th, the turn we're in, and the 25th, if we want to have any hope of winning that secondary objective. But obviously, even if we don't win that, we do need to you know, look into figuring out how we can win within 30 turns, uh, because uh, if we fail on the secondary, we've only got a couple of turns after that to succeed. The good thing is we have built a front, uh, a multiple uh, unit front against Belgrade here. It looks like we've got three units that currently touch the Belgrade defense, which should make our ability to destroy them, hopefully next turn, uh, in time to win that secondary objective, uh, much more likely. Uh, my troops in the south, the, this Yugoslavian countryside is heavily forested. It doesn't seem to be all that mountainous where my troops are moving, but I haven't really been able to figure out a way to move swiftly yet. Uh, there's still a bunch of Yugoslavian troops that are kind of staggered here and there uh, that uh, are providing uh, delays and speed bumps to my advance. As you can see here, for example, this one infantry unit is, is causing me, you know, some, some headache. And then we've got an armored unit, a Renault, a French-built armored unit uh, in our way. Uh, and uh, our own troops are kind of disheveled. They're a little bit, their cohesion is gone. Uh, none of them pretty much have the little white uh, number icon. They're all pretty much yellow or orange, and sort of the darker that number is, the less cohesion your forces have. Actually, when artillery turns orange, they can no longer provide supporting fire uh, because they are too disorganized. They can do indirect fire, which is a way to bombard the enemy, but you do a lot less damage. Um, so we'll see how this all plays out. I've got some air units kind of slowly moving forward. I, I thought, hey, we'll use our, uh, we'll use our Stuka here to clear the way so our troops in the south can get there, but now I'm kind of wondering if it makes more sense to send the Stuka in on Belgrade itself. The problem with that is, uh, if I do that, they're going to be open to anti-aircraft gun attacks from at least three enemy anti-air batteries, uh, which we've sort of discovered as being, uh, they're going to be a challenge, right? So... You can see the Yugoslavians are already counterattacking up near Belgrade, principally with artillery. Uh, some infantry here in the south is counterattacking. They're kind of threatening our flank with that infantry unit that just moved in southwest of my forces in Belgrade. And they're trying to shore up their defenses a bit. Uh, they're not going to pull the infantry out of the town because it's entrenched and it's one of their stronger infantry units. Most of the other infantry units we can see here in the south of Belgrade, like this one that just moved, uh, and, and the, the, the next unit that just moved, they have three and two hit points, so they're both pretty weak, uh, which means they're, they'd be more hindrance than help. Uh, fortunately, because of some of the way units shifted around in my attacks last turn, I can actually move an additional infantry unit in here and have four uh, units attack. Um... I've shifted my Stug, my assault gun, into artillery uh, targeting, so we've just bombarded the town of Belgrade with two artillery strikes, and now we can attack the infantry with up to four infantry units here. I think I should be able to overwhelm the town. What I'm more worried about is an eventual enemy counterattack. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shift all my forces west of the city uh, down or west one, so I can bring in this fresh heavy infantry unit with ten strength. Uh, to uh, attack Belgrade. You can see here there's some supporting icons as well from some of our other infantry units as they close in. Uh, my bombers don't look like they're going to do anything. Um, I'm not really sure how I want to use my air. I guess we'll go ahead and bombard them with uh, Stukas and then probably pull another unit up here. It doesn't look like my other Stuka can make it, so I'll fly my Heinkel up here. And uh, hopefully, you know, I'll bombard it with my Heinkel as well, and that'll be closer to the enemy artillery. So if they counterfire, they're going to probably go with the closer air unit, which is the Heinkel, which is not as valuable to me. So we've hit it with two arti rounds of artillery, two rounds of air. I think the enemy is uh, sufficiently softened up 
for us to begin the final assault on the town of Belgrade. First thing we're going to do is we're going to launch this attack with our infantry unit to the south to soften up some artillery, uh, because artillery is, uh, you know, they can support the defenders, I think. Certainly they can in Panzer Corps. And now we're going to begin the assault here all across the front against uh, the town of Belgrade. Uh, and there you have it. We've, uh, I think, driven the enemy out. Yep. We have or did we kill them? We actually overwhelmed and killed them. So their infantry unit was destroyed. We've got one other infantry unit up here with about five hit points that hasn't fought yet. We'll go ahead and move them in. Uh, I could have moved the attackers in, but they were a little bit weaker. So I launched an attack. I, br I brought in these troops north of the bridge uh, to attack southward. Did attack and weaken that enemy unit, but they also took some casualties of their own. So I'm a little bit nervous here. I took the city. I'm just kind of e leery that... The enemy counterattack, which I assume the enemy will have a chance to counterattack, could drive us out. Uh, because of that, we'll go ahead and shift south. We're not just going to end the turn because I'm not sure if I'll be able to hold. Uh, fortunately, the enemy doesn't have a lot of strong infantry units around, so I think I've got a fair chance of holding. But just in case I, I lose the uh, lose the the city uh, to enemy counterattack, I'm going to go ahead and move south and uh, finish the turn for these troops so that we can uh, continue fighting down here and, if necessary, uh, we'll be able to race north as sort of reinforcements uh, to the attacking force, which has been greatly weakened by those round-the-clock attacks on Belgrade. Uh, they took the town. The main question is whether we can hold it. So you can see they're driving back some Yugoslavian infantry, and now we're moving on to the Renault tanks, which seem like they're going to be a pain in the ass to deal with. Uh, both our infantry and artillery uh, don't seem to do very well. These French tanks early war do really well against you, so... Uh, We'll see how this all plays out. I'm just going to move, you know, guys, where I can. So we'll go ahead and strafe with some air units and uh, take these guys off. Go ahead and move some trucks forward and uh, kind of advance up the eastern bank of this river here, a more direct route on uh, Belgrade itself. Um, meanwhile, I don't think there's anything else I can really do in the north. All of those units kind of already fought. I've got one that I can reinforce, which... I don't understand why I can re reinforce those guys. I, it didn't give me the option to move them into the town. I would have if I could have. They were really strong, but... Anyway. Um, is that going to do it for this turn? I think I think we're about ready to end the turn. I'm not going to attack there with my armor. I'll move them away from this infantry here to kind of protect them a bit. I'm not going to move my infantry there into attack. But I think that'll just about do it for uh, for this turn here. I don't really see anything else I want to move. Maybe my artillery. Move it a little bit further north. They have uh, trucks they can shift into, though, if we ever get a breakout and can actually move long distances. Uh, we'll move our sort of scout planes up also. And, oh, there you have it, a victory. So you can see here we won a victory. We won the Battle of Yugoslavia, the invasion of Yugoslavia, the Battle of Belgrade. We captured Belgrade, Nis, and Skopje. Uh, we also accomplished every one of our secondary objectives. Uh, we won the, or we destroyed the Belgrade Command Center, we captured prison before Albania Falls, and we completed the mission in 25 turns or less. So overall, a successful battle. Yugoslavia has fallen to us, and I believe the next battle will actually be the invasion of Greece. Uh, so we're not yet to the invasion of Russia, but the, we're setting the stage for the invasion of Russia with the reduction of Yugoslavia first, then the reduction of Greece, and then presumably, I think, the next attack... It would have to be either Crete or uh, or moving right to Russia. I'm not quite sure which, but we'll find out. Uh, meanwhile, guys, that'll do it for this episode. Uh, we completed the invasion of Yugoslavia in three turns. Uh, it was a successful fight, and I'm pretty happy with the result. This was this felt like the first time in quite a while where my whole force didn't all get killed, and I actually gained a good deal of experience for my troops as well. Um, so this, I, I'm pretty pleased with the way this, this fight went. It felt like I was kind of in a fatal funnel almost of just losing so many troops you could never recover and then kind of buying them off and just barely scraping together a force to move forward. But that felt like a really a recipe for disaster if that's the way we we're going to go into the Russian campaign. Uh, this fight at least somewhat reversed that trend and I'm really pleased with the way things went down. Um, so with that being said, that'll do it for this episode in the uh, Let's Play series of Order of Battle. Uh, I'm also just going to call out that Order of Battle Sandstorm, which looks at the North African campaign, is coming out very very soon. I'm really excited, and I'll probably start a, a playthrough of that uh, to cover that as well. But that will be for another time, and next time we'll continue the series with the Invasion of Greece. Until then, uh, this is the Historical Gamer, as always, saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.